Remember when I did the video about the texting tax the California legislature had proposed? And some of you joked, what's next, a tax on the rain? The answer to your question is yes. I'm singing in the rain, just singing in the rain. Though, plot twist, this time it's New Jersey and they're beating California to the punch. I don't know why anyone would actively be trying to win a stupidity competition, but I suppose it's nice to have goals. Last Monday, Governor Phil Murphy signed 19 bills into law, including the so-called rain tax. S-1073 is supposedly a flood defense bill dreamed up by the politicians in New Jersey because their drainage infrastructure sucks. <laughs> This wonderfully convoluted 24 pages of law is about creating new stormwater utilities, at the expense of the taxpayers, of course, because someone needs to pay for the fact that the government doesn't do its job. The entire first page of the Clean Stormwater and Flood Reduction Act admits that the state has completely failed to maintain or even build appropriate infrastructure, letting nasty, smelly floodwaters run amok due to inadequate stormwater infrastructure and management. This is problematic because these problems directly affect the health, safety, economic well-being, and quality of life of New Jersey residents. The bill also admits that a stormwater management system is not in place or is not able to adequately absorb, capture, or convey stormwater, which then results in water runoff, which causes flooding and damage to homes, businesses, and property. Well, the fact that the state hasn't updated some of its sewer pipes since the Civil War just might be part of the problem. But, according to the bill, the state's inability to put in proper drainage or maintain its infrastructure isn't the problem. The problem is the rain. Water sucks. It really, really sucks. But, more specifically, that the rain hits things and then rolls off of it. Because, you know, it's water. And that's what I call high quality a cool. Now, despite all this lamenting about not having enough money for proper drainage because the millionaires aren't paying enough taxes and too many people are shopping on Amazon, the bill doesn't actually impose any fees, but it does give the towns and counties the permission to tax people based on how much they contribute to runoff. Meaning the more property you own, the more runoff you'll have, and the more you'll be punished for having property that will flood out the sorry excuses for sewers. But people won't just be penalized for having more land. The towns and counties are supposed to also take into account how easily the water will run off your land. This part of the bill is aimed at homes and businesses that have paved surfaces, aka parking lots and driveways. And the bigger the better. For the government, not for you. The idea is that when it rains, the water picks up pollutants from paved surfaces and deposits it into sewers and drains. Note that this has nothing to do with flooding, but with determining that property owners are directly responsible for any and all negative environmental impacts from water runoff. The bill doesn't say exactly how municipalities will measure the amount of runoff from any given property, only that it will be fair and equitable, which is code for bending you over and you sideways. I came in like a State Senator Steve Sweeney tried to convey the crisis to residents, claiming that this past winter was one of the worst as far as needing salt on roadways and thus that the salt content in the sewers is worse than ever before. Except Jersey actually had a pretty decent winter this year with less snow than usual and actually less salt usage. Mind you, the state of New Jersey has been treating its roads with salt for over 80 years and has never complained about any environmental impact until now. The government also typically doesn't salt people's driveways and sidewalks, but they can tax you for it like they do. But as one state assemblyman pointed out, the tax would also consider the size of your roof, punishing malls, apartment buildings, and commercial developments the most. So in other words, their reasoning is a load of crap. The government doesn't care about pollution, it just sees another opportunity to rake in the cash.
Further, this creates uneven taxes that could and likely will vary widely between different cities and towns, leaving residents little hope of fighting it because there's no standards put in place. There's also no way to try and fight this at the local level, making this plan pretty ingenious on the government's part. There's also no cap on the tax, so you can bet it's going to go up and up and up. The estate will also only get about 5% of all collected rain taxes, so of course state government has every incentive to let this tax grow. New Jersey already has the highest property tax rate in the entire country. Property taxes have doubled in the state over the last 20 years, and between 1998 and 2017, the average property tax bill went from just over $4,000 to $8,690. Meanwhile, 65% of New Jersey's lakes, streams, and other bodies of water are so nasty that they can't even be used as drinking water, and 85% of them supposedly can't even support aquatic life. But according to the New Jersey government itself, most of that is due to outdated sewer systems that combine stormwater with 23 billion gallons of raw sewage and dump it all into local rivers in a yummy New Jersey soup. So where exactly these billions of tax dollars have been going? Eh, nobody knows. That is your Liberty-related news for the week. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Leave me a comment down below. Please maybe avoid the new tax ideas because they might be watching. <laughs> and if you really like my channel and want to help support it in other ways, you can do so over at Patreon or through a one-time donation through PayPal and Bitcoin. As always, thanks for watching and helping me to spread the message of Liberty.